The truth is finally here. Hi guys, Marty from Top Gun PDR Training here. We're going to do a quick recap of our large dent panels dent repair basics. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video, the one with the black door, it's old school metal working for large dent repair. Make sure you watch that one first. This will be a quicker recap, but we're going to cover a few things that we didn't cover in the first video. So uh, enjoy. Now, I know a lot of you guys tuning in want to see metal move. You want to see a large dent being done. We've got plenty of videos up there where we do that. But fellas, there's no dent on this door, so this is theory only. And the reason I keep doing these guys. I've been watching texts, hundreds of texts, literally, in the 47 years I've been doing this, both uh, sheet metal, auto body, PDR guys, taking way, way too long to do these dents, and it's because they don't understand the basics of sheet metal, guys, and that's what I'm trying to get across here, so hate to keep harping on the same subject, guys, but if you want fast, clean, quick, efficient repairs, you want to make some maximum amount of money, you got to quit sabotaging the work and do it the way the old school Fairmont method guys used to do it. And teaching the Fairmont method of metal working is what we're all about here, as you already know. So let's get the theory down and start making more money. When sheet metal is formed at the foundry, and you already saw this, you watched that first video. When they roll it out in the foundry, it's made to be in tension this way and compression that way. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's standard, okay? Mm -hmm. So before it even goes on the panel, it already had forces built into it. So what happens when a panel is damaged, gets hit, what should be in tension is now in compression, and what should be in a little bit of compression, the crowns blew out into tension. That's our, that's one of our problems. So reversed. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Now, object hits the panel. If it doesn't hit hard enough, what will happen is, a crown, and just imagine that I get hit right about here. The crown forms. The harder you get hit down here, the further that crown moves up the panel, okay? And that's what will happen here. If I get hit, a crown starts to form, but if the impact doesn't have enough energy in it, the object bounces out, that crown will come out, and all you're going to have is a small little depression Maybe with a soft little line, top and bottom. You've seen those, I'm sure, lots of yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. Did, what that was was the object hit, and it just didn't have enough force in it to make the crown take a permanent set. Okay, so it bounces out, crown bounces out. You got a soft little dent. Get two little micro pressure traps out there. Pick that up, and you're done. Okay. Now we hit this a little bit harder than that. And now it gets hit hard enough to where the crown reaches what we call the breakover point. And I don't know, have you ever heard that term in auto body? Well, it's a set point, but yeah, a breakover point. I've yeah. heard you. Yeah. yeah, breakover point is that point where when the crown forms from there or steeper, it's there for good until you get rid of it. Okay? So if we get hit hard, hit hard enough, and usually the breakover point on most crowns, right around 160, 150, some, you know, depends on the curve of the panel a lot yeah. of times. Right around 115 and 116. This is just this is a flat panel. It doesn't get any easier than this, right? There's no body line, it's just flat this way, you know, moderately mild curve there. Super easy. So if we get hit hard enough, the crown reaches past the breakover point, now the crown stays and so does the dent. Okay. And I'm sure you both heard here, and you I know you both heard the term popper dent, right? What is it? You both heard the term popper dent? Oh yeah. Yeah, popper dent. Sure, yeah. You get back of it and push a little bit, the dent Boing. pops out. Well, that's a dent that the crown barely got past the breakover point. Just barely. And so if you if you just pop it out, you're still going to have a little bit of crown there. Though, oh, right? you, well, it's not you, just well, you'll, have a, oh. you'll have a pressure, a, a, a little pressure the pressure there, yeah. But all you got to do is just lightly push right on, and you don't want to push on the impact point even on those. You want to push just underneath the crown. It'll pop right out. You just have a soft little line there, soft little line there. You tap those down, pick up your low, you're done. Just, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes max, absolute max, okay? Now, like I was telling you before, guys, I want you to start thinking about crowns, their energy, their energy storage places, okay? The harder this dent gets hit, the further the crown moves from the dent and the tighter the angle of the crown gets. Yes, it's right. up into it. Until, until it's like a... That's a major amount of energy stored in that crown. 
Okay, and people think, well, no, I want to start on the on the on the impact point and move it. That's a fatal mistake. Uh, almost everybody will do that. Even body men, I'm mm -hmm. sure you know you've been oh, yeah. some years after. You push it. That crown, that energy in that crown, guys, that has got to come out first. And the thing is, we talked about your breakover point being right around there. Hey, let's, let's say that's about 160 or so. Okay, 150. Now, to go from 150 to 130, just a little tighter crown, it took quite a bit more force to do that. And the way I, I mean, over the years I've noticed, that every 20 degrees extra impact uh, crown angle, you can pretty much be sure it's going to double your finishing time. The time you could take it, the time from, it's going to take you to remove from it. The, from the set point, from the breakover point? Correct. So at 150, might take you five minutes mm. max. 130, it's going to take you 10 just for that extra 20 degrees because there's double the amount of energy now stored in that ground. It's pretty much a, 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 it happens just about every time. Okay. Now to go from 130 to 110, okay, a little more of a crown angle, double the time again, double the amount of energy trapped in that crown, okay. To go from 110 to 90, now we got double the force again. And that's the way it happens, guys. Past 90 degree crown angle, every 10 degrees you go, you double it again. So at a 60 degree crown angle, you got quite a bit of energy locked up in that. Quite a bit of energy, and that's why one of the uh, one of the limitations that I hope that you guys will will, uh, will abide by stay at about a 90 degree crown angle or less. That's where your sweet spot is. <laughs> yeah, that's where your sweet spot. Well, no, not necessarily past a uh, pass on it. You can still do them, but you need special. You have to use tension and a lot of mm -hmm. other things. So at 90 degrees, guys, or less. Okay, 90 degree crown angle or less. That's your sweet spot in the large network because that's where you're going to make the most money. Get to a 95 to 98 percent repair the quickest, and be able to do. I mean, you can do three or four of those a day easily. So at the at the 90 degrees or less, at the 90 degrees or less, uh, uh, bread and butter, um, there is no need to put any tension. Oh I, boy, I, you bet there is. Or is I'm saying because I can. And if I'm, I'm any, at the shop, I can do it. Any time I see a dent come in, and I know I can put tension on it. Kaching. It's gonna. Uh, I'm gonna make my match. I mean, we talked about three hundred dollars an hour being your, you know, that's the mm -hmm. minimum you want to do. And uh, when you put tension on, double that. It makes that thing come out so fast, and not just move metal fast. It makes your finishing go so much quicker. Yeah. That, that's Probably the big so thing. Much of a better finish. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. all the way until it's done. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm telling time. everybody, man. Anybody can move metal. You know, you can take this foot behind something. Any idiot can move metal. Mm -hmm. It's moving in a way that gets you to the fast finish. That's what counts. The nicest finish. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. T tension will always do that. You hold the tension all the way until the thing is finished. You bet, well, to about at least a 90% repair level, probably even a little bit fast. Fast, okay. I get all my pressure traps out. Uh, if I have to re arc the panel, everything, that's all done with a while there's tension on it. Any need to adjust or check tension? You betcha. If that, uh, as you're taking those pressure traps off, you'll watch your mm, traps. Yeah, you're, What's you're, cool you're, is if you get one of those tension spring gauges where they got the little loops on them, and then you get that dial in there. You can actually see it. It's, it's really as cool to watch. You take a pressure trap out. Oh, I just lost 30 pounds. Oh, that's take crazy. One, I lost another 30 yeah. pounds. Yeah. By the time you just get your pressure traps, wow, well, I got 100 and 150 pounds out of that thing. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah, I just keep adding the pressure, uh, the tension on it. Cause it again, makes my finish go quicker. It helps the crowns work down faster. It works. It helps everything move quicker. I was wondering how much it pull off of that. I figured you'd get some. Oh, you can get a lot. That that, I've had a few. That suburban den I did. I had. I'm at, I didn't have a string gauge on it, but I'm estimating I had about a ton. So if you um, were to put tension on there and you had a gauge, about how much tension would you say you put on the panel? Totally depends on the dent. Okay. Like I said, that Suburban had close to a ton. Uh, it's mo most moderate dent, I bet you I don't have 300 pounds, 400 so pounds, maybe. pounds. Which isn't a lot. It's pretty good. You could come along or a strap and just keep well, the tension on Well, I like motorcycle tie-down straps. What's that? Motorcycle tie-down strap. Yeah, that's magic. Yeah, that little, that I, did you see that article where I had that little dozer machine in there? That's what I, I use that, or I use that post over there, I use that all the time. They actually yeah. make little quarter ton chain falls that are almost five new. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways, but wait, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So, okay, so guys, 90 degrees or less, that's our sweet spot, okay? Yep. All right. In fact, we'll put a 90 degree crown. Right there. Three a day, keep the doctor away. Yeah. 
and uh, I'm all going to bulk collector away. Okay. Now, that's our first limiting factor. Second limiting factor, fellas, I recommend it for about the first year, stay away from anything more than a quarter size worth of stretch metal. Okay, if I kick this with my boot, I can kick that about as hard as I want with my boot. I didn't put any stretch metal mm -hmm. on it. I just displaced a whole lot of metal. I didn't stretch it. My boot or my fist is not nearly hard enough or travels fast enough to actually thin out metal. And that's what, one thing I would, you guys, stretch metal is thin metal only. You gotta remember that. That's all it is. It's thin metal. So, where do we have stretch metal? You can have the impact point. Where else could you have it? Well, at the top of your crown. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If you've got yeah. a flat piece of metal, and it goes like that, what happens? The area up here gets stretched. Oh, yeah. And what Our happens garments. to the area at the bottom of the crown? You probably know this one. What happens? The area that the paint falls off. Or well, well <laughs> yeah. but the area on top of the crown does what? It stretches. Yeah. yeah it Push stretches. Up the it stretches. But what happens at the bottom? Watch. It, it compresses. <laughs> they call that upset metal. Upset metal is metal that's in compression. So you'd have stretched metal there. Upset metal to bottom. Okay, a 60 degree crown will have a major amount of stretch metal up there. Absolutely. That we'll have to deal with. And we'll show you that a little bit later. So, guys, anything more than about a quarter size worth of stretch metal, uh, could you do it? You can. But here's the issue a quarter size worth of stretch metal, uh, it's about 50% bigger than the golf ball dent you guys did. It was just before the aluminum you guys did a, you guys did a, just, just, Maybe 10 percent bigger golf ball size dent. That dent, at the most, at the bottom, at the most, had maybe a quarter of a pencil eraser size. That yeah. was it. That's all I had. Yeah. Okay. A BB. At mm -hmm. my most, at the most, quarter size. You're going to be there a long time with a sharp tool, yeah, unless you've got a power box or something to have access to it to use something like that. You're going to be there all day long. I mean, not all day long, but you could be there a half hour. Mm -hmm. Shrinking up metal being very, you watch that uh, video on stretch metal, well that could be you. <laughs> Just, yeah. And after about 10-15 minutes you're going, oh my god, shoot me, get me out of my room. <coughs> so, a uh, quarter size or less, dime size actually when you start now, no more than dime size guys. And I'm not going to bother going over stretch metal because you guys know what that is. So. Now, we can hit hard enough to form a 90 degree crown. Okay, and like we said, most of our energy is here. Uh, and like we also said, most guys, you know, something like that, they would push on that impact point to move it because they get instant gratification. They do that, the crown looks like it comes out, sort of, kind of, and they get about, you know, 60% of their den, maybe 70% of the den pops out, and they think, wow, you know, I'm rocking. All you did was totally sabotage yourself, dude, because that, that energy trap there that could have been worked out very, very easily, you just created a nightmare scenario. You took that energy and you moved it through most of that panel. And that's why, and I'm, I know you've done this as a body. Yeah, chasing energy. You pick up a little air, you just chase oh, yeah. it off. You say, oh, heck, I'm mudded. I'm mudding it, man. I'm mudding that sucker. <laughs> you chase the whole panel. That, well, go ahead and mud it. And you, like, like you, you know, you noticed too, six months later, the car comes back and, oh my God, I know I did a better job of blocking mm -hmm. that. You did. You just, but you left trap metal in there. You left trap pressure in there. So yeah, mud, mud, does, mud will not cure that. No. Okay. So what we got to do is get get that crown, that energy to move back into the dent in a very fast and efficient manner. Okay, that's our thing. Now the uh, ones that you did on, remember the aluminum body line you did, mm -hmm. that aluminum body line? We could wash that crown down, that was no problem. This is much, much too big for that. You can tap on that, it's just going to go, yeah, give me a rest shot. Yeah. It ain't going to move at all. All it's going to do is make the dent deeper there. So what we're going to have to do is find methods to help direct that crown into our dent. Now, when we can do it, by far the fastest, most efficient way is with tension. No question about it whatsoever. You put tension on that panel, you can watch that crown go, mm, dent pops out, keep the tension on it, get your pressure traps out, you're gonna think, bang, you're done, deliver the car, just that fast. Well, okay. Tension but you've done that as a body man, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tension. Yeah. Huh? When, what do you see? Oh, um, yeah, out, like, pops uh, you know, you get a really smashed in a rear cooler, and you go to the frame rack, and you give it some tension, you get a pull, and you can, yeah. you know, That'll work on a door too. Yeah. With glue I, I never just thought of it like that. That's oh, yeah. glue tab yeah. like you did in I wouldn't even have thought of that. Yeah. I'd be putting a I'm, mole clamp on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Back in you know, like the early, late uh, 60s and 70s when I started out, metal was quite a bit thicker. I mean, it was not oh. like it was in the 50s, but it sure was thicker than it was now. I mean, you had to use tension a lot of times. That metal just was not going to move any other way. 
metal is so thin today, uh, a lot of times you don't, you, it's still best to use tension, but you don't really need it like you did back then. Uh, really but easy. for fast finish, you sure do. Okay, so fastest way to get that energy back on that dent and to take care of your pressure traps is with tension. Okay, now like we said, we have lots of different ways, but the fastest, most efficient way. Now this one here, since it's right in the middle, we would love to put a tab here, a tab there, pull the bolt with tension. That's the ideal way. So, one tab here, Let's see if that holds in the video, one tab here, one tab here, and we pull them both, both at the same time. Now, it's probably not realistic unless you have the door off the vehicle. Oh, that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly right. So, let's say if this was, now if this fender would be here obviously so we couldn't be doing it, but if the fender were off the car, this is how you'd want to do it. Right from here, okay? And the basic theory is you want to put your tab, your tension tab, roughly in line. And again, that's with there's no body line here, just a nice smooth panel, doesn't get much more or less complicated than that. You basically take not, not where your crown is, not where your dent is, you put your plate in line where you estimate the breakover point would have been on that dent. You don't have to be exact, just, just roughly in line with that. That's where you would put your tension. Okay. And as you're putting your tension down, the really important thing to remember is now on a 90 degree, this isn't so important. 80, 70, 60 degree, this is very, very important. You get to 60 degree, you have to use tension because if you don't, you're going to have a, a mess on your hand, really, or you're going to be there a long, long time. At 60 degree, at 90 degrees, rather, usually, all you got to do is put tension on it and that crown rolls very easily. But sometimes even on a 90 degree crown, and like I said, definitely on 80, 70, and 60, what will happen is you'll start pulling, it'll initially start to move, and it stops. And you go, hmm, put a little more pressure on it. It doesn't want to move. That's the crown saying, I need help. I really do need help. That's when you stop immediately. So I'm not putting pressure on it. I'm not watching the dent move. My 100% of my focus right there. And if, or if it's on the bottom, it's there. If they're both the same, I'm focusing on both at the same time. And if either one of those crowns stop moving, I immediately stop putting tension. You take your, your hammer, your uh, nylon hammer, which I like this metal one a little bit better, or your nice soft tap down, and you start hitting on that, and help it to relax. And as soon as you, and it's cool to watch your tension gauge as you're doing that. You'll see it poof, like 30, 40 pounds sometimes. Or at least 20, just poof, gone, just, just from that. And what happens? You put tension on again, now it starts moving freely. And on a 90 degree, one time you'll probably have to do that, and after that she moves. Now a 60 degree crown, if they were all the way up here, uh, you might have to do that five, six, seven times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the key is, guys, if my metal stops moving, you stop moving. Can't stress that enough. You Process. Think, well, I'm using tension, man. No, it isn't cool. It isn't cool. Once that crown stops moving, you quit putting tension on and you address that. You ready, my brother? Ready? Okay, now, people say, well, what about that bottom crown? Well, usually, again, not always, usually on a panel like this, your top, well, especially with just a direct edge, your top worse. crown will be a little bit more because the journey flattens out. There's not much curve on the bottom generally. This will have a little bit more crown angle. When do I address that one? When that angle matches that mm -hmm. one, I'll go for it. All right, a lot of times you don't even need a plate down there, but if it's a little bit, if you think it might, you simply put your plate down there where you imagine it would be, and I don't even pull on this plate at all until that crown angle matches that one roughly. And then if it's not coming out well, I'll go ahead and do them both at the same time and come right out. Usually, I just use plate here and a plate like at the bottom. The, I, this only is for like extreme, like that, that Subaru and uh, not oh, Subaru, the like the Suburban. What's that? The, the double one you're saying? Yeah, I use this maybe once, gosh, every, I bet you every 20 large dent repairs I'll have to use this. That's it. So this is not used all the time. Just two of these hurricane straps, that, that's going to be 20 for you. Okay, one on the top, one on the bottom, if needed. Right. Yeah, why is it that it's always at the, the top? top that you always have the sharpest crown. Generally, well, I've never it's seen like generally a because crown there's more, more of a curve at the top than there's at the bottom of the door, usually. And again, it depends on what angle it is. Unless if something was coming down yeah, that right. way, would it? Exactly. Well, okay. you better would. You better would. It would aim it. It would yeah. send everything yeah. down. Like, you know, that, I mean, it's very subtle that you just get a direct boom in it. I mean, it's got to come at an angle. Things are going to happen. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I was curious because I've actually, I don't recall seeing a whole lot of, they're always shot right at the top. Sure. 
Yeah, that's right. So estimate where your breakover point is, put your tension on, if the crown stops, you stop, tap it down. Like I say, guys, that, that's the beautiful part about 90 degree or less crowns. That's gonna come out very quickly, very clean. You're gonna be finished. Uh, that is not gonna take any more than usually an hour, hour and a half. And that's a when you can use tension. Fender was right here, and if I dent it back here, going from there, will it make a difference? Kinda, kinda. But in the middle and toward here, it really does help to have tension both ways. But if you can't, it's better. I mean, if you, if you can't do it anyway, then put tension on one end and pull it. If it's all the way on one side, it isn't gonna do you a whole lot of good. That's when you really need to have the door off and that jig over there. That's what I used to, uh, you know, if there's money in it. R and I the door, and you know, being a body man, how fast do you take a door off? Most doors. Not even 10 minutes. Yeah, max. Yeah, do you adjust it just that fast too? Yeah, yeah fast. I get it up on a stand, have tension on both sides, exactly. and then 20 minutes. Yeah, you mount, <laughs> you mount to that jig, dude, you're ready to go. Right. Yeah, when you can use tension, guys, always the fastest, cleanest way to do it. And like I said, leave the tension up throughout the entire repair, take it off at about the 90, 95% level. And I, and I do, like you said, I keep tension on it while I'm working, because it helps get that fit, uh, final finish much, much faster. Okay. Again, this is no body line yet. We're not talking about body lines yet. Bread and butter right here. Oh, it is? This is going to be my gravy right there. <laughs> what happens when, for whatever reason, we can't use tension? Now, we talked, I think we mentioned before, that tension, re even if you have the right equipment, usually 50% of the time it isn't practical. Could you use it? You could if you wanted to take the time, but sometimes it's just, it's just you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to use it either because we can't, because there's something uh, in the way, or it just would be impractical to just mount the door or something like that. And you can figure, yeah, the time I'm going to save there it wouldn't make it worth it. Okay, so let's say that 90 degree crying or less, you can't use tension. What do you do? Well, what you don't do, we already talked about, is get your instant gratification. We want to take that metal and move it right back into our den. Okay. Tension would do it quickly. We can't use tension. So what we're going to do, remember the little crown director tab we showed you? Okay. Yeah. So we give the camera a close look of that. That's a oval tab that you cut. Okay. And the reason we cut it like that, we want to put that on a 90 degree, on a 90 degree crown as close as we can to the apex, the top of that crown. That's the apex. As close as we can to that. And what we're going to do is pull. Hopefully you've got some kind of a jig to put that pressure on, either your truck receiver hitch or mm -hmm. a two by four mount to the wall on the high hook. Anything will work. That's right. Just a hundred pounds, 150 pounds. And what that'll do, be both hands free, tap it down with a hammer, tap down, whatever, and just start working that crown into the deck. So you can work it until the crown reaches that point, we glue it, and usually about three or four of these max, and you've got that crown to down. Yeah, I'll also do this on a 60 degree crown if it's real bad. In addition to tension, I'll use this also to help things move. So we put that as close to, now, here's one thing guys. You don't always have to put this as close to the apex. If it's like a shallow crown, you could probably start down there. But here's the thing, no matter where you put this tab, two things to watch out for. You want to watch, first of all, the crown should move freely. If it doesn't, you stop. But also, if you pull metal out from underneath that tab, so you're pulling and you see metal pulling underneath that tab, so you're pulling like a little bit of a snot of metal, you stop immediately and you glue that tab closer to the apex. Yeah. yeah. Now you so pull if that, that happens, and you stop because your purpose is not to move metal, it's to get the crown energy yeah. to get back into that den as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So you get a much faster finish. At what degree do you stop gluing it and start using the Well, I mean, when the, t when the top of the tab is kind of starting to get into the, you know, it's trying to roll past the tap, time to re -glue. No, um, uh, to so, so you're going 90, 60, you know what I mean? No, it, it just depends on the crown. Okay. So, I mean, when I, when I see the apex of the crown starting to roll past that, it's time to re-glue it. No? Okay. I got you. You sure? Okay. Yeah. And then we just re-glue it as, as the crown comes down, we re-glue it until it pops down. I got you. Okay. Before, before glue tab came into use, what we used to do is get them back with soft tips or something and just push that crown out, shallow it, tap it with more soft tips, tap it and just grab it. These are much, much faster. Of course, tension is super, super fast. Okay, so we're taking that crown energy, moving it into our den. Okay. So as we're re-gluing this, our, 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 our energy is moving into the den and when that crown angle matches that one, I'll probably do the same thing here, do them both at the same time. If you have something to pull off of especially, wash those crowns into the den, everything pops out. I say, well, 
the guy that pushed on the back, he, he his metal moved a lot faster than yours. He, that's true. His did move faster than mine. But it may have taken me a you know a while longer to do it than him just getting back out there and push. We weren't trying to move metal, we were trying to relieve pressure. That's right. That's right. So after my metal popped because the crown moved back into the dent and the dent popped out, I look at my dent, I didn't get 60% or you know, 50, 60, 70% if I'm lucky. I got like 85, maybe even 90% of it popping out. And so okay. yeah, using that with tension, it's gonna leave you with so well, much very little. Yes, and the out of like leave so much very little. less little. It Lose. does. So I got, I got, I got a much faster. I'm gonna get to a much faster finish now because the guy that had the energy and and after those guys would pop it, if you see somebody do that, just ask them. You know, let me watch you. <laughs> after it pops, look at the pan. And you go, oh man, look at he's got a big old horizontal right there. Got a major one down here, right where his crown was. There's a line. Oh, after you My wash those crowns out, all you gotta do is pick up that stretch metal and not, stuff. Not, not quite. Set up right now. No, not quite. Not quite. So our, crowns, <laughs> so our crowns have moved out, everything pops, we're cool. Now if we if we use tension and this happened, uh, we don't have a heck of a lot more to do. Our, our pressure traps are going to work out very, very quickly, but um, let's say that we couldn't use tension, we did it this way, everything pops out. Now with, yeah, with tension, the next thing we're going to talk about, you barely have to do. But we said, you know, what happens when we can't use tension? Okay, so energy's moving in the dent, everything's popped out. You just said, now it's time to pick up my low. Uh, no, you don't. No, so you don't. Check and, and check for more pressure traps, baby. Because yes, most of that energy did move because we did it the correct way. But since we couldn't use tension, and sometimes even if you use tension, you're going to still see these. What we're going to have, guys, is residual pressure still in that panel. As much as we do with the guy that did pop it out, no, nowhere near. But we're still going to have some. And you don't want to pick up on that low until that residual pressure is out of that flipping panel and into the dent, okay? Or at least into the panel where it needs to be. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about three types of pressure traps. Now our residual pressure that's left. They're going to be horizontal pressure traps and they'll run horizontal to your panel and pay particular attention where the top of your crown was. That's where they love to hide. Almost always you're going to see a soft little, you feel it this way, just the softest little not even a buckle, just a, oh, that's, that's just very soft, very, very, very soft high. Uh, you watch a lot of the videos on, on YouTube and stuff, you'll see very, very clear, very clear horizontal pressure tap, and they're just yanking away at that thing, trying to make that metal move. It's like, that's like trying to push against the spring. You, know, you push against the trampoline, it's coming right back yeah, up. Yeah. You gotta take the springs out if you wanna do something with it. That, that, the whole yeah. crown stop there, you'll see those horizontal pressure traps. Usually, yes. Now, if you use tension, uh, Probably not. It, it all depends. But without tension, you're, you're certainly going to see uh, sometimes very minor. Sometimes they'll go, go quite a distance. But usually, since you roll that crown back in properly, you're not going to see them nearly as bad. Okay? So the horizontal pressure cap is what I'm going to talk about first. And, and here's the thing, guys. This has got to, I cannot stress this enough. This has to be done in the right sequence. If you do what we're going to talk about in the next 10 minutes in the wrong sequence, you just screwed yourself. You cost yourself a lot of money and you're going to have a harder time finishing. Horizontal pressure traps usually have the majority of your pressure and we have to work those out first. Yes. The majority of our pressure is held from horizontals. We have to get that out first. Uh, it'll actually help to restore the tension in our panel. We talked about that, that tension. And uh, oh, by the way, we did forget to mention when you put that tension in the panel, guys, one of the reasons that works so well is it puts it back into the factory tension it wanted to be before it was hit. Okay, that's just one of the many Memory. things that tension does. It puts that panel back into tension and compression just the way it was at the factory. Okay, so now you can fix it like it was. That's correct. Supposed now, to be. our horizontals are going to be the first, first pressure trap that we fix after our dent pops up. But here's the issue remember when we were doing horizontal creases and some, some of the horizontal pressure traps you've taken out already? You've noticed that when you put your board horizontal, what happens? You lose your visual information. Mm -hmm. If you're using a pinstripe, it pinches up. If you're using a fog, it pinches up. Yep. A highly curved door, you put your board up there, your reflection pinches right up. So unfortunately for us, a horizontal pressure trap that if it were this way, you could see very easily. This way, you're gonna have a hard time seeing. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's big, though. the hardest ones to see are the ones that are wide and kind of long. It's like, oh my gosh, they blend into the panel. Mm -hmm. and that couldn't possibly be a problem. You bet it is. You bet it is. If it's that wide and that long, that is a bigger spring than if it was tight and from there to there. That's a huge spring. Okay, so 
How are we going to see them? And we said pinstripe is a very digital way to see your damage. We're going to start from the bottom to the top or top to the bottom. We're going to run our three quarter inch pinstripe on your, on your outside finishing board up and down that board and we're looking for any pinstripe pinches. Okay, if it's thick all the way through, no problem. If it pinches from there to there, you got a pressure trap. So you go from top to bottom, make a mental note of any of them, and go out about at least six inches from where the dent used to be. They love hiding outside dents. They do that all the time. So in fact, you had that one hide on the door just a couple hours ago, remember? It was, it was right there in plain sight. You just didn't look for it. No, the one at the top. <laughs> That's right. right. So about six inches at least. So I, I've, seen, I've seen a few foot away. You know, that does happen. So foot away. And sometimes they can even be above where your crown was. That does happen. Sometimes you can get stacked crowns on them. They should have one here, a smaller one there, or sometimes even a bigger one. They, they, you know, metal does funny things. Okay, so the first thing you want to check for, guys, horizontal pressure traps, any line pinches. You put your board like that, put your uh, troubleshooting light in the back of it if you can't afford one of those finishing lights yet, and you knock all of them down. Okay? Now, what you'll notice on a panel like this, especially when there's no body line, it's just a nice simple panel, after you've taken your horizontal pressure traps out, I want you to get your head back and I want you to sight over that panel. You're going to go, you know what? Just taking those horizontals out brought a lot of my vertical lows, uh, helped them a lot, helped them a whole lot. I mean, can you imagine if you left those springs in and you're sitting there horking on that middle, you wonder why it's not moving? Why are you having to, uh, uh, and, it, and it's fighting you because you, you're, you're leaving huge pressure traps locked up in that middle. That, that's that residual pressure, okay? So you take your horizontals out first, you look, you go, okay, the my, my vertical is like, no, relax, that's really cool. Okay, now, can you start picking up your metal? Nope. Next thing you're gonna look for, and you saw them in that in that uh, that black car you just did. That's the one. What well, you see, 45 degree pressure mm -hmm. cap right there, staring in your face. So what we do now is we take our same board with our pinstripe, we run it at a 45 degree angle here, here, and there, all four directions. All four directions through the dent. Start about six inches away from where the dent used to be. So if the dent was there, you start up here, go into the dent, here, all the way into what's left. Those, if you were doing this on there, this one, mm -hmm. and you had a big pressure traps at the top or mm -hmm. in the vertical, is it more efficient for you? Are you doing it with a, a tap down or is it more efficient I with a nice hammer? hammer? I, I, well, I use a master tool, mostly that master tool. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I use mostly, but I absolutely will use that hammer. A nice too. hammer. The hammer, it, I like the rebound. Sometimes mm -hmm. on, on certain soft crowns, I love that rebound action. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it's even better than the master tool on certain ones. Most, most times I'd say I use a, a master tool. So if a guy's pretty decent with a hammer, though, the, the, a nice hammer is a good, probably better than a, a tap down, no? though. Absolutely. And if it's yeah. a very soft crown, let's say it's a very soft pressure trap, remember we talked about, go to Home Depot, oh, yeah. get yourself that really expensive freeze stir <laughs> stick, put about two cents worth of Gorilla Tape, one layer only, you put it right on that soft little pressure cap, bang, 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 mm -hmm. with a hammer, take it down, a oh, little bit more, bang, bang, and put your pinstripe there so you can see it in the reflection. And sh until that pinstripe's nice and thick, go to the next one, take them out. The metal slapper works better, but this is free. It, uh, it, if you get over uh, zealous with a metal slapper, you can sometimes you know make more damage. Uh, oh, yeah, they're talking about the metal slapper with a hammer. Right, that's yeah, more efficient than this. Nice... Yeah, that's more efficient. But this, this is, I mean, it's hard to mess up with this. I'm not saying you can't. Oh yeah, but you, you mess up with anything. Yeah, you do this, it hard this, enough. And, and if you mess up, it's easier to, easier to correct if you do something yeah. else. I'd say when you're first starting out, stick Works with it. Yeah, I mean, it's free. I mean, you know, but, but I, I use this on occasion. Mm. So I'll still use it. So I just, just it. hammer it down, yeah. hammer your soft little buckles down, you're good to go. <coughs> you can do that in your 45 degrees. <coughs> it's not very bad. Okay. So we check our 45 degrees. Let's let's, let's say we had one here, one here, nothing over there soft little one there and nothing over there okay then we wash those and you're done if you got say three of them top top okay. bottom corner you want is there a place to start top i generally take bottom. the first one the longest one and the worst one first all right so, yeah, so the sharpest one you start at the top and work your way uh, I, I, go from, I go from the sharpest to the longest okay. I, after a while you just you, yeah. you, you can tell the difference between a mm -hmm. sharp one and a long one that's not as sharp the sharp ones usually have more energy stored not always though not always sometimes a broad long one is going to have obviously a lot more 
Uh, if it's broad and sharp, you better be, you better mm. be starting there. Okay. Good question. Okay. Any other questions? Nope, not yet. Okay. So let's say we've got all our horizontal pressure traps out. Now, oh, and by the way, after you've done that, again, look at your load, you're gonna see all that softened up here, like your black vehicle there, what happened? You got that 45, oh, look at that load, softened up yeah. beautifully. Your glue pulling went a whole lot easier. Okay, now, final thing, we put our board, and you don't have to use your pin strike now if you don't want to. A lot of people do. They just see these things a lot better off pin strike. I like the pin strike myself. I, almost everybody starting up does. Now, I, I would like to use my foggy for horizontal, but you can't. The floor is right there. I can't get the board back far enough. So yeah. I'll use them on my horizontals. On, on 45, I generally use use the fog. Sometimes. Uh, I'll double check with the pin strike, though. Absolutely. The pin strike okay. just seems to really... Really? Well, it's very digital. Mm. It, it either squeezes or don't. You know, that's, that's why I like it. It's really user that's, friendly. That's one of the advantages of a pin stripe board. You can put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's going to show you the same information. Fog, you have to have that fog adjusted right. Yeah. Okay, so next thing we'll do, check for any vertical pressure traps. So start again about six to eight inches outside your dent, sometimes even further, and run that board into the dent. And you see a small one right on the edge. And guys, where these love hiding is right on the edge of the soft little low that's left in your dent. So if you have a soft little low from, say, there to there, pay real close attention when you're just entering that low and coming in. Usually what you'll see, there's a curve and then that line pinches right up. You better get that out first. Okay. So they like hiding right next to where your low, what, after everything's popped out, that soft little low you've got, they'll be hiding there a lot of times. Sometimes they'll hide above or below, so you just... Run that pin strike through, any pinches, take them out. Now, at long last, at long last, we can do what he said. Pick up my lows now. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, if you don't have any stretched metal, remember we said we make this one with our foot or our fist or whatever, you're not going to have any stretched metal. Glue, pull, soft tip tool, whatever you want, take it out. Then it's just pretty much a matter of... What did you promise the customer? What percentage you promised? If you mm -hmm. promise them 95%, put the board a few feet back, make it look good, you're done. 98%, put it back a few feet more than that. 10 feet. Uh, 10 feet is usually for a little bit, a little bit more than 98. And like I said before, guys, a true 100% large dent repair, I mean a real large dent repair, I've never seen one yet. That includes me. I've seen a lot of people that said they were, and they look at it and go, dude, that ain't even 95. Mm. You know, I mean, if, 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 you can get, if you can stand 20 feet back in a white picket fence reflection and go through and you see absolutely nothing, you just did 100% large dent repair. Now, uh, on a, on a uh, like 150 degree crown or soft crown, oh yeah, no problem. Now, I've done several 99s, never gotten to 100% yet. Get my head 20 feet back and look at that, there's, there's something. Uh, I'll yeah, tell you what, I, I, I've, noticed, I've noticed over the years, you know when you see them less when you put tension? When you, you, put, when you put tension, every 99% every repair I've got, you know, fairly oh, quickly, he's been with tension. tension. Been with, you you betcha, he's been so with tension. It just comes tension so gets, gets you go faster finish, higher percentage finish, much, much faster. Tension's the Okay, so what happens when we put a body line into the mix? Well. Two possibilities, either hit below the body line or above or below the body line, or hit right on the body line, right? Okay. So let's say we have something that hits right across our body line, puts a crown up there, maybe glue on the bottom. Okay, these actually aren't that bad at all. If people think, okay, now, when they're hitting the body line, now nah, you gotta move that body line first. And I'm gonna tell you no. Mm -mm. And just about everybody's going to disagree with that. Uh, every metal man I've ever met that disagrees with that. Everybody says the, the, the body line controls the metal. You've got to so. have it out first. That's what they say. That's right. Let's just, let's just say they're right. Let's do it their way. <clears throat> okay, we got a, let's see, we have that even worse crown up here. Let's make it interesting. Okay, yeah. All right. I pull that body line out. I get, either get in the back and, you know, whatever. Get that body line worked out and doggone it. It looks like that a lot of that crown disappeared. Well, here's the problem. That energy is still there, and there's a lot more of it now up here. And since this area is curved up here, it's going to be a lot harder to see. A lot harder to see again. Plus, if you push that body line all the way out and let that pressure there, that body line now isolates this panel area from that panel area. You don't want that, guys. You want to move all that right into the body line, top and bottom crown into the body line. Now, having said that, 
I will put a tab on my body line, usually, especially when they're hitting the body line, I'll put a tab, some kind of a tab across there. But I do that for the sole purpose of getting the crown energy to move into that body line area. I will put a small tab, a small tab there, and I'll put maybe a hundred pounds of force, maybe a little bit more on that body line, but I'm watching that crown constantly. That crown stops moving, I stop immediately, and I usually have one of these in there anyway. So I'll put a little bit of pressure on the body line. That body line, that crown stops moving, instantly stop. Put pressure on that crown, and I'm working that into the dent. Just like I did if there wasn't a body line there. You say, well, do you ever put any more pressure on the body line? It depends on how my crown is moving, guys. And you'll notice a focus here. Everybody's focused on the body line. A fair amount of method metal guy, that, that was Whew. They, they, I mean, nobody would, you would even think of doing that because we want that energy back into that body line first. Why? Because it affects our finish time. Will this move metal faster? It will. Will that help us with our finishing time? Absolutely not. So we put pressure on that body line and we're putting pressure on it. Watch our crown. It probably stopped moving. If you were like 100 pounds, it stopped moving. You stopped moving. Put your crown director tab, put pressure. While that has pressure on it also, that's ideal. So if you have like three straps, one on the body line, one on top, and one on bottom of a tab, pulling simultaneously, maybe 100, 150 pounds max on your body line. This is where the bulk of your effort's going. So we're washing that crown on the body line, just like we did with our regular dent, okay? Now, what I do is I watch the tension on this while I'm having the pressure go down. I, I'll, I'll thumb the strap a couple of times and if it gives like a, like you can tell the pressure's starting to let up. Absolutely, I'll put another 50, 75 pounds on that. But while I'm doing that, I, I could care less about the body. I'm not even watching it. I'm just totally focused on my crown. And as if that crown keeps moving, I'll go. If it stops, and it almost always does, I stop and continue washing it down. So I, I do the same thing. I continue with that tab down until everything's washed into that body line. Okay? Now, Doing it that way versus just <clears throat> working on the body line, you're going to notice that we talked about body line hinging. Remember that? Mm -hmm. You're going to notice you have a much smaller body line hinge than if you went like that. Okay, and after, after that, everything pops out, that's your next focus body line hinging. You see, well, I thought you said horizontal pressure traps. A, hor a body line hinge is a horizontal pressure trap. Yeah. That's energy locked up in that body line. So remember, we said it, when, it, when you get a pressure trap there, what it generally does is slightly dull out your body line. Okay, so if that was the size of our dent, you can count from about there all the way to there. You're gonna have just this, if you get your head back and really look down that panel, you'll see it. Just the slightest little low all across that. You better be addressing that fairly fast. Now, if you have a significant pressure trap up here, I would do that first. So after that's kind of popped, you can see that you have a horizontal body line hinge. I would still check, and if I go all over where that crown is, boy, there's a pretty significant one there. I will do that before I will get that body line hinge on. Absolutely, absolutely. I want any residual pressure up here and here out before I really pay attention to that body line hinge on something like this. Now, on other on body lines, I might do it a little bit differently, but this is a classic example of one that I would want to get almost all that crown energy into that body line before I even thought of getting that body line hinge out. Now, does that mean that I can't put pressure on that body line hinge while I'm washing the crown? Oh, I would absolutely do that. Absolutely. So that crown, that, that tab on there, I'll go ahead and maybe even over we'll pull it a little bit. But again, I'm not watching the body line. Could care less. I want my horizontal pressure taps out of there into that body line. That's where my concern is. Do you have tension on the door that way as well? Oh boy, if you can do tension with this, it's a cakewalk. Absolute cakewalk. Generally on something like this, if they got to get right on the body line, I'll probably, I might possibly put two of the of the um, hurricane straps and pull them simultaneously. Is it important how far the tab is on the panel? What if you came up with something that just kind of pinched the edge there? You can grab it like this. Yes, sir. You're going to damage it. Okay. They do. They have their mold clamps. You know, the, the, you know, the mold yeah. clamp does. Yeah. Uh, there, there, I actually thought about that a couple of times. The problem is you'd have to match the curve of that door exactly all the time. Okay. If you use like a soft medium to do it, it that glue pulling it really is better. Okay. People think, well, why don't you put one on the body line as well? Uh, on, every once in a while, I would do that. But guys, my concern, 
still is for those crowns. I will be concerned about that body line when my crowns are out, which remember, last in, first out, right? You, you, you learned that as a body man, right? That was one of the guiding principles of Fairmont, last in, first out. People always think, well, I, I, I you know, but that body line kind of went in with the crown, understood that that, and, and that, and your crown isn't even your last damage. Your last damage, guys, was the whole panel going in a little bit of compression. Just a tiny little bit. So what I'm doing when I'm putting pressure on the body line, I don't even help my crown move. Now, if I, if I got the pressure caps out, I'm focused on my body line, I am still, as I'm putting pressure on my body line, watching my body line hinge move, I am still watching for any horizontal pressure caps up here. Every once in a while, you missed one. You had a brain fart, you missed one. Mm -hmm. Pull it out, if I see one, I stop, get it out. And after that time, uh, you can, maybe with a slide hammer, just kind of hit that body line and, and take some of that out. But usually you're gonna notice that if you do that, there'll still be soft little lows on either side. That's your, that's your body line, you're screaming at you. If you can get a flat bar down there, that's the ideal tool. You start, remember, if they take the diameter, start 50%, or at least 50% either side, and you just sharpen up that body line all the way into your deck. And even then, as I'm doing that, I will stop occasionally and look for what? Or long pressure traps. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If I, if I body line is not moving up easily, something's doing it. Something's, you say, what about the impact point? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. I want that body line hinge out of there. Okay, <coughs> I'm still looking for these pressure traps as I'm doing it. Okay, after that, I would probably look for any 45s. Okay, don't see any? Good. How about your verticals? Usually on a body line, you don't see a lot. A lot of energy went right into that body line. I'm going to check anyway, though. Okay, everything's cool. Now I can go for my, my uh, impact point, okay? With heat, always use heat on body lines like we talked about. You've got to use heat. And if you're going to glue pull that body line, that bulk out, remember to heat that tavern panel up. Especially if it's inside of a brace that you can't get to very easily. Usually, on, sometimes on body lines, if they're close enough to the top, that, that uh, uh, inner brace goes all the way to your body line or past it. How about when they wash past the body line, like up in that door there, like where the belt mode, you see that top line? Uh, yeah, sometimes the crown will like wash past. Oh, well, now since you brought that up. I didn't keep both knots. Well, that is the perfect. You just asked a question, what happens when the crown goes past it? You see two lines. But the crown would have been up there had there been metal up there. Remember that video we talked about rearcing the panel? That's a classic. That is an absolute classic rearc the panel scenario. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, you don't see that. That's a pretty hard hit to do that with a hit on a body line, but you certainly do see it. And that, that is almost 100% of the time. You better rearc that panel. Say, so, well, okay, when do I rearc it? Um, and like that video said, what I would do, I always test. I'll get a block of wood. You, you remember your glass is there too now, so you want to get some window wedges and move it out. I'll put a piece of plywood on there and I'll just use my dead blow hammer, sight on it, and I tap like that. I watch what the shock does. If the shock made those lows jump real, okay, we got something here. I'll go ahead and put a jack underneath there like we did in that video and we'll hmm. compress that. It's, it's a, the, 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 you're supposed to call it recrowning. That's what the old timers call it. Then it went to re-arcing and now it's you know recurving or whatever, but that, that we, you're actually putting the crown, the curve. This is not a crown, this is a roll buckle. A crown means a curved panel. That's what it's supposed to mean. But now we're calling these crowns. <laughs> so you're, we're actually re-crowning the panel. And yet another easy way to see those guys, and I'm surprised so many people miss this. I have seen, I have seen. I will bet you 5% of every line of dent repair I see that's, that's done improperly. You look and they, they tried something a little bit too big for them and you look and you can just so clearly see that entire panel is soft, low, even including the body line. That is classic re-arcing the panel, re-crowning the panel. You re-crown like that, the body line comes right out. The rest of it, rather. That, that, that black door, there was no damage on that sucker, right? And what, what, what did we do? We're fixing it. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Mercedes, Mercedes aluminum doors are very expensive, those door shells. Yep. Same with the beamers and, you know, yeah, the right there, Absolutely. Sure. That, 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 I'm always quick to tell people that, man. You know, yeah, you may get a new door shell. You ain't got factory paint no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wait three years. But water-based paint, you wait three, four years. And the whole side of these cars painted blend, blend.
There's the blend, there's the blend. And how come that color doesn't blend. look like it did when, yeah, when I first picked it up, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it kind of all depends on how you sell it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you guys with tension, this is going to work a lot easier. Okay. Now, let's say what happens if we get hit below or above the body line. One of two things will happen. We get hit. The energy either was enough to get past the body line or it got trapped in the body line. Unless it's a very light hit. I mean, you don't worry about that. But if it's a light hit, you see, you know, that guy hit pretty hard. But gee, the body line still looks fine. First thing you check for, is there any thumbnail crown right above the body line? You're looking to go, oh, that little thing? Yeah, that little thing. You'd better get that down and pick that body line up right away. Yeah, I would do that before. Yeah, in that case, I would go for the body. Even if there's a crown up here, I would go for that first. It's because it's so yeah. close to that tight yeah. line. But usually, I mean, so if there, right if you can see there's nothing here. It, it all looks factory. But check for a thumbnail crown. If there's not a thumbnail crown, there will be a body line hinge. Get that little, oh, that little thing? Yeah, that little thing. The first thing I would do, I'd pick up that body line hinge. Okay, so if it gets hit here, and metal and the energy got trapped inside the body line, energy just doesn't go, guys. It does something. Well, it doesn't look like it. Get your head further back. Get your head further back. Oh, but that's so slight. No. Pay attention to that body line. I guarantee you, you'll see. If let's say a spot like that got stuck in, I will guarantee you, dude, from there to there, you look, you'll go, mm -hmm. oh, it's all, that's all, kind of all in, huh? And how many body, what body men get way back here and look? Nobody does. It's like, that's how the customer sees it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about how the customer sees it. I care about how much the energy locked up in that panel. How does the panel feel? It's all about the panel's feelings. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's, uh, how, how, how does my panel feel? All panels matter. Yeah. Panels are really snowflakes. You know, you have to consider the feelings and, you know, well, they all matter. massage them right. And, yeah, they, they have feelings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, <coughs> okay. So that's the first thing. Energy got trapped in the body line or, or, it wasn't hit hard enough to even do anything. But if it got hit relatively hard and you go, well, it went right past the body line and it still formed a crown. Okay, well, well that, what do I do then? Well, usually if you have a 90 degree crown and it went past the body line and still formed a 90 degree crown, that, that's a fair amount of energy that got locked, got locked up in there. Uh, usually you'll see something like that. And of course, like you said, if it's blasted back, back here, uh, I'm recrowning that thing. Now, again, I, I did slip that, I uh, slipped past that. So when would I recrown? That is a matter of experience. Uh, there have been times when I immediately recrown. You, you just know from experience, you immediately recrown that, or maybe I'll wait till later and say, well, well, what about if I don't have experience? Do the test thing we talked about. Get the body, try it first. If you go, it's not doing the thing, okay, move the body line. You know, get, get most of that out of your crown up first, I should say. Then you buy, try it again. Yeah, that's making a little, okay, then go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Just kind of test it first, but yeah, again, the crown blew past there. You, you got you got a classic we are in scenario, recrown so scenario. What would happen if you recrowned it and it didn't need to be recrowned? Okay, let's say that there's no crown up there, but you thought, well, I, that, that recrowning well, sounds yeah, cool. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. It really did. Right. So you put your jack on there and you bang, mm -hmm. kind of like that. Nothing happens. What you, well, oh no. <laughs> oh, oh no. Something's going to happen. <laughs> well, let's say you do it on a brand new car with no damage. What you're going to find out is you're going to have a bulge. Yeah. Right here, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. slight bulge. You get that and you go, oh, look at that. But it, it must be a stamping mark. You know, that was you, that was you, that was you. Yeah, so no, you obviously would not want to do that. that that's, and I, uh, guys, around, I would say right around 5% of my large dents, I end up recrowning. That's all. Oh, so yeah. yeah. This is not something you can do all the time. But you'll see, I mean, it's classic how many times you'll see these and somebody that gave up on the repair. Oh, gee, I just couldn't get that up. Well, it's one of the things that they, they missed. Okay. So, uh, go ahead. Any question? No, no. Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, here we go. Oh, put that back for right now. So, I, the energy made it past the body line and formed us a nice little crown. What do we do? Still the crown, guys. Mm -hmm. Still the crown. It's always the crown. Uh -huh. See, but yeah, but it was hit there. The energy went past it. Uh, but I still feel that crown should move. Well, we'll we'll accommodate that. We'll we'll, we'll put some pressure. 100, 120, 150 pounds. But why am I doing it? The crown. The crown. I want the crown to move. Crown is king. I want the crown is king, baby. So usually, there's not even exceptions to that rule. So I pull on the body line about 120 pounds, just enough to help that 
crown move, put my tab underneath there and just treat it like I would any other dent without a body line. Okay, now that's if it got hit under or above the body line, the energy sucked it in and still formed a crown. I washed my crown down just like I did before. And when it washes past that body line, usually most of it pops out or all of it. And after that does, I'll go back on my body line. I'll say, okay, I do have a hinge there, but I also have a horizontal pressure cap there. Guess what's coming out first? A horizontal pressure cap with the pressure on that tab still there. Now, usually after that's popped, you have to retension it. And what I'm doing is I'm retensioning the body line. Is it to move the body line? No, it's just, how's my horizontal pressure cap responding? Well, it's responding really well, cool. I might even pull it past, past a lever. Take that pressure trap out, let the pressure off, good. Okay, I've got that body line hinged. I'm sure I have no pressure traps up here. I run my board. Oh, I got one slight one there. Take it out, move again, cool. Now what do I do? Now nah, go ahead and get your body line hinge up. So yeah, we would get the, uh, the, the uh, body line uh, hinges worked out. Uh, again, I would check for any pressure traps, 45 degrees, uh, get your impact point and just do the same thing that we did uh, for something without a body line. But the, the body line hinge guys, that, that's, I see that, I mean the largest dent repairs that I see, I will bet you I see bar, a solid 80% four out of five times, very, very solid. Because they left the body line hinge in it. Do, do, do I see it from here? No, get that crazy up there it is. All right there. Here with that flat burn, it's like, come on! Mm -hmm. Body line hinge or horizontal pressure trap, usually one of the two, sometimes usually both. They look horizontal pressure trap and a body line hinge in. They just don't ever think of going that far out to check for it. And part of it is that it happens so softly and subtly that it just seems to blend when you're looking at it from here. That head sometimes got to be five, five, sometimes six feet back. Oh, there it is. At six feet back, yes, I see that hinge. Do I see it at three? That looks cool at three. You do your body work like this, and when it leaves, it's going to look just the way, the same way it did 20 years from now. But you're not going to be in a body shop anymore. I won't be a Not at 42 bucks an hour, you mean. It's just <laughs> ass out of there. <laughs> now. Well, I'll be working out of there, but I won't be working there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that, that's kind of... No, oh, one more thing. Now, if we put uh, if we put the attention on it, did that help this whole process? You better believe it mm -hmm. does. I mean, a body line will work out. You take a flat bar with tension on and body line, you, you do it with your little finger. No, right up along the body, yeah, it just comes right out, no problem. Nice. With the greatest of ease. Uh, another way to do it, if you, uh, what, I, what I love doing instead of glue, if I've already got the panel detrimmed, I put, I think I showed you that airbag with a rubber ball on it and it conforms to the shape beautifully, pump that up, that get, that'll give me pressure and I'll, I'll wash the crown move down. Added a uh, nice thing about that, that ball is, it provides something for me to tap against. Oh, it's like having one of those rubber block dollies in there. Works very nice. So you put that right behind the body line? Uh-huh, and what I'll also do sometimes on a highly stylized body line, like the, my wife's Mustang there, uh, I'll still use the rubber ball, but I'll tape, I will duct tape a, uh, a uh, Delrin rod about that long, but the length has a little V-shape on it. I'll put that right on the body line, pump the airbag, it'll force that ball with the Delrin rod. Mm -hmm. it, it shape matches it perfectly, you pump that out a little bit past it, work everything on, bang, you're done. Bam! Yeah, but even if I'm doing that, I'm still watching my horizontals and my crowns. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're top milling. I don't care what, what you're using to push the, the, the body line out, it's for right then to move those crowns out efficiently. Once they're moved out, horizontal pressure caps and body lines together and then it's just the body line. Again guys, if you just pull a body line out only, will you get instant gratification? You certainly will. Your finishing time is going to hurt though. On, on a large dent, now if it's just like a moderate dent, you might get away with that. Yeah. And you've done it as a body man several times. Oh, Everybody man, you just, you just chased, you chased the yeah, panel yeah. and pretty soon you get tired of it and it's a time for the mud baby. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's either because you worked everything out in a wrong sequence or you just didn't see what was there. Mm -hmm. I mean, every body man that I have ever met leaves body line hinges in his, in his work. Every one. Yeah, it's so I mean, I'm it's talking about the past top. 30 years back, you know, when I learned it, that you wouldn't even dream of doing that. That would have been like, I'd have fired <laughs> next operator did something like that when yeah. I'm an apprentice. 
Any other questions, guys? Anything that any stuff, any repairs you've done, they know, how come this happened? How come that happened? Why does metal hate me? <laughs> metal loves me now. Metal loves you. Well, you don't know yet. You haven't done this. Oh, it loves me. Yeah. Well, so you see how well it works.